on printing techniques. This unit introduces skills needed for the process of printing. Students will learn printing techniques through a combination of textual content and drawings. This unit comprises of three modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit, students will be able to identify the materials and tools required for printing and describe the basic printing techniques. The first module gives an overview of the development of printing and the different materials and tools used in printing. In the first section, you will be introduced to different printing techniques. Block printing is the process of transferring color, pattern, motifs or decorations to fabric. This can be done using one or more colors in any one of a variety of methods or techniques. It involves the surface application of color in a predetermined pattern, design or motif by manual or mechanical direct or resist methods. Colorants used in printing contain dyes thickened thicken to prevent the color from spreading by capillary action beyond the limits of the pattern or design. In printing, wooden blocks, stencils, engraved plates, rollers, screens, transfers and digital printing methods can be used for employing colors on the fabric. Traditional textile printing techniques may be broadly categorized into four styles. In the direct printing style, colorants containing dyes, thickeners and mordants or substances necessary for fixing the color on the cloth are printed in the desired pattern. In the modern style, a mordant is printed in the desired pattern prior to dyeing the cloth. The color adheres only where the mordant was printed. In the resist dyeing style, a resist substance is applied onto the fabric that is subsequently dyed. The resist areas do not accept the dye, leaving uncolored patterns against a colored ground. In the discharge printing style, a bleaching agent is printed onto previously dyed fabrics to remove some or entire color. Resist and discharge techniques were particularly fashionable in the 19th century, as were combination techniques in which indigo resist was used to create blue backgrounds prior to block printing of other colors. Modern industrial printing mainly uses direct printing techniques. There are several distinct methods at present in use for producing colored patterns on cloth such as hand block printing, perotene printing, engraved copper plate printing, roller printing, cylinder printing or machine printing, stencil printing, screen printing, transfer printing, electrostatic printing, photo printing and digital textile printing. Wood block printing on textiles is the process of printing patterns on textiles usually of linen, cotton or silk by means of incised wooden blocks. It is the earliest, simplest and slowest of all methods of textile printing. Block printing by hand is a very slow process. It is, however, capable of yielding highly artistic results, some of which are unobtainable by any other method. This is a wood block used for textile printing. The word printing implies a process that uses pressure, being derived from a Latin word meaning pressing. The German word Druck for print also means pressure. And there is no doubt that the first textile printing technique that is making impressions was using blocks with raised printing surfaces which were inked and then pressed onto the fabric. By repetition, the image from a single block builds up into a complete design over the fabric area. Some early blocks were made of clay or terracotta while others were made of carved wood. Wooden blocks carrying design motifs were found in tombs near the ancient town of Panopolis in Upper Egypt. 
The realization that certain colorless materials could be used as mordants to fix dyes extracted from plants and minerals and the discovery that different mordants applied first gave different colors with the same dye was a vital step in the prehistory of dyeing and printing. Where this style of printing originated, whether in India, Egypt, China or elsewhere is not clear. Experts state that an early variety of cotton dyed with madder around 3000 BC was found in jars in the Indus Valley. Evidences of madder dyed flax fabric were also found in Egypt dating to 1400 BC. In China, the dyeing of silk was developed very early and China is credited with the invention of paper printing and therefore it may have been the birthplace of fabric printing. A stencil is a thin sheet of material such as paper, plastic, wood or metal with letters or a design cut from it. This is used to produce the letters or design on an underlying surface by applying color through the cutout holes in the material. The key advantage of a stencil is that it can be reused to repeatedly and rapidly produce the same design. The design produced with a stencil is also called a stencil. Painting stencils can be made for one time use. Typically, they are made with the intention of being reused. To be reusable, they must remain intact after a design is produced and the stencil is removed from the work surface. Stencil paintings of hands were common throughout the prehistoric period. Stencils may have been used to color cloth for a very long time. The technique probably reached its peak of sophistication in Katazome and other techniques used on silks for clothes during the Edo period in Japan. The earliest use of stencil was found in Japan from 8th century. The early stencils were fragile and broke easily. Therefore, most of the early stencil designs were bold and clumsy. The Japanese transformed stenciling into an art form known as katazome. In this technique, sets of identical stencil are cut with a long thin knife from paper made from waterproofed mulberry fiber. One sheet is brushed with adhesive and silk threads or strands of hair are glued on in several directions like a net. A second sheet is then glued on top. Color is then applied through the stencil with a soft brush. Some of the most sophisticated stencils are thus made in Japan. In Europe, from, from about 1450, they were commonly used to color old master prints printed in black and white, usually woodcuts. This was especially the case with playing cards, which continued to be colored by stencil long after most other subjects for prints were left in black and white. Stencils were used for mass publications as the type did not have to be handwritten. In this section, you will learn about the materials and tools that are used to print fabrics. The tools used for printing are printing surface such as a table, pearl pins, pigment colors, binder and fixer and containers to mix the pigment and binder. The tools used for block printing are wooden blocks, block printing tray, metallic mesh, foam sheet, muslin fabric, newspapers and pre-washed fabric pieces. The tools used for stencil printing are plastic sheet to cut out the stencil, pencil or pen for tracing the design, a duct tape, stencil cutter or knife, cutting mat or piece of glass, thick brush for or foam brush, sponge, pre-washed fabric piece, polyurethane or acrylic sprayer and newspapers. This module gives an overview of the block printing technique. The process of block printing begins with the wooden blocks. Wood carvers cut designs into blocks of different shapes and sizes in which the portions to be printed are carved or raised in relief. The top of the block has a handle for the printers to grasp. 
Each block has two or three cylindrical holes through it to permit the passage of air and to allow excess dye to squeeze out. There are also various points carved into the block which the printers use as placement indicators as they pick the block up and move it to the next patch of fabric. The blocks used for block printing can be made up of different types of wood, metal, linoleum, etc. Designs on wooden blocks with very fine lines which are not possible to be carved are made by inserting pieces of copper strips. The number of blocks required for printing depend on, on, the, on the number of shades in the designs. Yes. The pigment printing process consists of six steps. These are displayed here. We will look at each step in detail. The pigment printing process consists of pre-treatments followed by block or stencil printing, followed by drying, then further drying, followed by curing, rinsing, which is the last step. Prior to the printing process, bleached fabric may be sourced readily from the market. One needs to ensure that no surface impurities or starch remain on the fabric as starched fabric cannot absorb the dyes properly. Any existing starch on the fabric may be removed by thorough washing. The next step is to prepare the printing surface that is the table consisting of three layers foundation, padding and cover cloth. This is the table surface or wooden board. Padding can be done by spreading multiple layers of felt, jute, old woolen blanket etc to a thickness of an inch. The cover cloth over the padding can be secured to the underside of the board or the table by using smooth cotton muslin or light canvas fabric. This picture shows the setting up of the printing table. The next part of block printing is the preparation of the printing paste which comprises of the following activities. For block and stencil printing, Pigments are used as colouring substances. This is the film forming material which forms the bond between the pigment and the fabric. Thickeners are used in the form of emulsion that give a thickness to the pigments. This can then be easily applied to the fabric surface. There are catalysts and cross-linking agents that help in printing process. To prepare the printing paste, a binder emulsion is first prepared and later mixed with the pigment. This paste is then used for printing. The table displayed here shows the recipe for binder emulsion. This table gives a recipe for printing. More binder can be added to the above paste as required. Pre-mixed binder emulsion is also available in the market which can be directly mixed with pigments and fixer as per the printing recipe. In the next stage, the fabric to be printed should be ironed and tightly stretched on the printing surface and can be secured in place by pins. Areas to be printed are marked with the help of fugitive color and measuring tape or scale. Proper gaps or seam allowances should be left for cutting and stitching. A printing tray is required to be prepared prior to beginning the process of printing. It helps to keep the printing paste evenly distributed on the surface of the block. The printing tray is a rectangular wooden or plastic trough. The first layer in the tray is a metal mesh. It is followed by a thick layer of woolen felt or foam sheet. This is then covered with a thin muslin cloth. The color is spread on this upper layer with the help of a small stiff piece of cardboard, metal or plastic. The block should be carefully pressed on the printing tray with even pressure so that it may pick up a uniform layer of printing paste. The block is then stamped on the stretched cloth by giving blows 
with the fist on the back of the handle to ensure a clear impression of the design. The printing of the design should be carried out either from left to right or vice versa or as per the layout of the design to be imprinted. A separate printing tray is required for each color of the design. The block is stamped repeatedly to build up the pattern or design and the process is carried out until all the colors are separately applied. Finally, a second application of color is done. After printing, the fabric is left for atmospheric drying. The freshly printed fabric should be handled with care so that the impressions are not transferred to other areas of the fabric. Next, the fabric should be heat set at a temperature of 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. This can be done with a dry iron or heat press, pressing the printed fabric from the reverse side for 2 to 5 minutes. Move the iron to avoid scorching. This is followed by curing, which is done in a curing chamber at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes. Alternately, curing treatment for the fabric can be done in a dry oven, for which loosely rolled fabric may be wrapped in an unprinted newspaper, newsprint paper for 2 to 3 minutes at 170 degrees to 180 degrees Celsius. If required, this may be followed by rinsing the fabric in a neutral detergent. Now that you have learned the process of block printing, the final module will give you an overview of the stencil printing technique. There are five steps in the process of stencil printing. Preparing the stencils, drawing the design, carving out the shapes, creating bridges and sealing the stencil. The process of stencil printing begins with the preparation of stencils. Stencils are made by cutting out shapes or designs from a flat sheet of stiff paper or stiff plastic sheet with a sharp pointed knife. Trace or draw the design on the stencil material using a marker or pen. The design should be carefully planned ensuring that all sections of the image remain joined by bridges. Use a sharp knife or cutter to carve out the shapes in the stencil over a cutting mat. Any shape, if cut out completely from the stencil, would fall out of the pattern, leaving a spot or gap. To prevent this, some form of a tie is used to link the shape to the main design on the stencil. The outlines of the shapes are therefore broken at convenient points by cutting the stencil partially. This uncut portion serves as a tie to support the inside parts. These ties are commonly known as bridges. The bridges or connecting areas in the stencil may be reinforced by a packing tape or duct tape. Silvers of tape can be used on both sides of the stencil to strengthen thinner shapes in the designs as well as to repair any mistakes. The cutout design will be the positive printed shape. After completing the cutout on the stencil, it is important to further reinforce and seal the stencil by spraying it with commercially available acrylic or polymeric sprays. This sealing protects the stencil from dampness during the application and cleaning process. After assembling all the materials, one can start printing using a stencil. The fabric to be printed should be free from creases and should be stretched out on a printing surface. The pre-treatment and the preparation of printing paste remains the same as for block printing. The preparation of printing paste for stenciling is the same as for block printing. It may be poured into a shallow container and can be applied to the fabric through the stencil using a foam brush. One needs to ensure that the brush is not overloaded with paste. The brush may be daubed repeatedly up and down in the container to ensure the even coating of the brush surface with the paste. 
The application of the brush should begin from the middle of the stencil in the largest cutout area. The brush should not be glided in the open areas of the stencil as it leads to seeping of the print paste under the edges. Thus, instead of one single application, several coats should be made to develop the design since a relatively dry application ensures better print. After applying color to all areas, the stencil may be peeled off starting from one corner. The stencil must be cleaned after three to four applications by a sponge. The post printing process to be followed should be the same as described in block printing. You have now reached the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit you learnt about the two basic printing methods, block printing and stencil printing. Thank you.